Hello and welcome. My name is Robert Danzig and this is going to be a workshop in faux bone, a new material that I've developed that is useful for artists in varying disciplines. And without further ado, let's get started. I like to get these really tiny little craze marks. If you have something that's very, very old, a lot of times, especially something like ivory or bone, they get these very, very fine lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently make some lines. I'm, I'm putting almost no weight onto that knife. It's really just the weight of the knife itself. And I'm making quite a few so you'll be able to see them. And now what I'm going to do is go to one of my very favorite ways of finishing things, and that's just a real regular old shoe polish right out of the grocery store. And what I have in here is I have an old container, and you'll hear that there are little bits in there. And what I like to do is I like to just shake it a little bit. When I take off the top, just little tiny bits of the shoe polish have stuck to the top. This means that I can put my brush in here and pick up very, very small amounts of the polish. If I went back into the regular container and, and got a big glob on here, it would just be way too much and I couldn't control it. This way I can pick up just little bits of the polish on my brush. And just a word about the brush, these are just um, regular, right out of the hardware store, bristle brushes, bore bristle usually. Then what I do is I cut them off to about half or three quarters of an inch. Just take a pair of scissors and cut the bristles right off. That way, it's a lot easier to scrub into the lines. You'll see, if I had long bristles, it's way too soft and won't get into those little crevices. So now I've got just a little bit of shoe polish on here. And what I'm going to start doing is, this is where I made all of the lines with my craft knife. And you can't see them because they're extremely fine. But what will happen is, as I start to deposit a little tiny bit of polish on here, you're going to start seeing all of these little lines. They're extremely fine, and those are the ones that look like the crazing lines of age on the surface of things, again, like ivory, bone. Almost any hard surface will get those with age. Now, I have a few on there that are, are starting to really show up. If I wanted to put a few more on there, I can very gently come across. Again, I'm not going to see them until my shoe polish, and they start showing up. Now, you'll also notice that the shine on the surface is starting to increase a little bit. That's because it's polished. That's what shoe polish does. I'm going to go around the edges a bit. You'll also notice that the cross hatching from the checkering file also really starts to sing when I get over it with the shoe polish. Now, just a couple of things about marks. Um, I'm very fond of the mark of a maker. It speaks to things being handled, things being um, around over time. Another thing you can do with marks is the viewer is going to start reading these marks in certain ways. If I have lots of marks that are going in a certain direction, in a certain place, like that, and I'll show you what that looks like, all of a sudden, I have a place now where there's been a lot of action on this. Now, the viewer is going to do this. It's usually subconscious, but you would say to yourself, well, why are those scratches there? What is it that went over those, over that spot on this particular object to make those scratches? Who made them? Again, this is what I mean by layers of information with these marks. And every time you put a mark on here, it's one more piece of information that a viewer is going to be able to get from the work. So that's not particular to faux bone, but it's just on everything that I make, certainly. And, and when I do workshops, we talk about that a good deal. You'll notice that the entire surface is getting just a little bit darker. I'm going to get a little bit more shoe polish on here. The differences are very subtle. I'm not looking for a big lightning bolt change of color or something like that. Very subtle. What I'll do is I will put this aside for a little while, and the medium that the polish is, the pigment of the polish, the medium kind of evaporates as it does when you're polishing shoes. Now I'll go back in a little while and I'll buff this up. Now this is brown shoe polish. Shoe polish, as you know, comes in lots of different colors. The piece that I have here was actually done with something called cordovan. Cordovan is sort of a, a purplish shoe polish. And you can tell that the difference here is pretty evident between the brown and the purple. I will also, from time to time, use black. The black is the black inside those scratches. And that's black shoe polish, and then a lot of it's rubbed off. I'm also using fairly rudimentary and fairly crude tools. An awl, a file, a knife. However, the faux bone also lends itself to this kind of work. This was done by a real master engraver in Waltham, Massachusetts. 
And I had a workshop in a studio right next to his, and he said, may I try a little piece of that? And I figured he was just going to make a few lines or something like that, and about an hour later he came back with this. I wish that I could do something like this, but I can't. But again, the faux bone really lends itself to this kind of accuracy as well. Now what I can do is take this and buff this up a little bit. Now I could bring to bear on the faux bone all of the kinds of tools and machines that I might have if I'm a jeweler. If I have a buffing wheel, can I buff this? Absolutely. Um, even small buffing wheels on a rotary tool, if you have a Dremel tool, and it usually comes with a little kit that includes a mandrel, the little piece that comes out with a buffer on there. All of those tools are applicable for the foam bone. I'm doing it all by hand to show you that you don't need those, but everything that I would normally use in a shop, I could certainly bring to bear on this. The one caveat to that is, if I'm using a buffing wheel, I would use them plain. The buff would have to be a plain buff with no compound on it. This is soft enough that if I use compound on it, I would actually melt the surface of the faux bone onto it. It's too abrasive. So if you're going to do something like that, you just use a plain, unsewn muslin buff and you will get a beautiful, beautiful finish. And after just a little bit of buffing, that's what I've got. Now I could go back into this with lots more color, more lines, and do layer after layer after layer. Expand your jewelry and mixed media art with the limitless possibilities of faux bone. This non-toxic and seemingly indestructible material has the look of bone, but is completely animal free. In this workshop, innovative jewelry artist Robert Danzig provides a great introduction to faux bone and jewelry making basics. Robert introduces jewelry tools and the basics of shaping faux bone with lessons on sawing, sanding, drilling, and polishing. You'll learn how to make rivets, add micro fasteners, and combine faux bone with resin and metal clay. Robert uses materials easily found in your local hardware store or in your craft closet. You'll combine your new skills to create a finished faux bone pendant. You'll carve an original design and add character by polishing and antiquing. You don't need much to get started, and the potential for this new substance is endless. Explore its texture and design possibilities in faux bone jewelry, tools and techniques with Robert Danzig.